we've all seen prices of companies like Zoom, Netflix and Amazon soar during the COVID lockdowns. Well, I'm sure you guessed it right. It is the technology and digitalization that is adding value to a myriad aspects of our lives than ever before. One such intriguing aspect is the application of technology in the Indian financial services, especially the payments infrastructure. Did you know that in a country like India, where people cash se sabse zyada pyar hai, is one of the leaders in the global uh, digital payments industry. More than a third of the people in India use digital payments, including the poorest sections of our society. The past decade has been so astounding in terms of digital payments in India that the Reserve Bank of India named that decade as the decade for payments in India. However, we should know that this is just the beginning of a new, smarter and more technologically driven India and that we are a long way to go to transform India into a completely cashless economy. So, to firstly understand the benefits as well as challenges of going cashless, chalo pehle samajhte what it means to be cashless. Whether or not you're a fan of Mr. Modi, I'm sure you've heard phrases like faceless, paperless, cashless, Jandan, BIM UPI, and Digital India. Well, these all words more or less relate to Mr. Modi's efforts to transforming India into a digital and cashless economy. Well, traditionally, there have been two main ways of transacting online. Number one, through either mobile banking or internet banking, wherein which you go to the bank's website or its app and the, then you add your credentials every time you want to transact. Uh, the other way of transacting online is via your debit or credit cards, which is still effectively transaction involved using your bank account. A new way to make transactions has been made possible thanks to the, one of the biggest modern day revolutions in India, the uni Unified Payments Interface or UPI as abbreviated. When Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon, he ironically said that a small step for man, a giant leap for mankind. Well, UPI has had a similar impact on India. Now you do not need your ba uh, receiver's bank account details or uh, IFSC codes or any other details other than the UPI ID of the receiver and your UPI ID to transact via UPI. In some instances, you might not even need that. All you simply need is the receiver's phone number or his name. And ab jaha bhi ho India mein, karo transact via UPI. UPI is a system that aggregates multiple bank accounts into one a mobile application. And it is so fast, cheap, and convenient for the user that its prevalence has grown exponentially over the past few years. To give you an example of its popularity, the UPI transaction volume crossed 280 crores in in June 2021 itself. You wouldn't even believe the power of UPI, especially in the small value retail transactions is so high that in 2020, 2019-20, it has almost eliminated cash as a mode of payment in retail transactions. There are three major players that have helped uh, UPI gain its popularity and uh, those three players together hold a market share of more than 80 to 90 percent in the country. The largest of the three is four pay followed by google pay and paytm be it buying clothes online paying your bills or even buying a few snacks from your nearby kirana stores both the volume as well as the value of digital payments has skyrocketed in india over the past 10 years for instance, the digital payments that were around 500 lakh crore in value in 2010 have jumped to a whopping more than 1600 lakh crores in 2020. So how did all of this happen all of a sudden? And uh, that too in a country like India that is highly dependent on cash. And today it has become globally renowned for its digital payments infrastructure. To understand this, chalo, let's go a bit back in time to see how the payment structure has evolved over the years. Better internet access as well as connectivity and increased smartphone penetration have been the major catalysts for the digital transformation of payments infrastructure in the last decade. Moreover, the increased competition from the technologically savvy players in the financial services or the so-called fintech firms have been contributing increasingly to the digital transformation of payment services in India. Surprisingly, unlike in many countries, India's central bank, the Reserve Bank of India, is the sole regulator as well as the supervisor of the payments industry in India. This has been a key factor in developing the modern payment system in India. 
RBI has always been on top in terms of innovating the banking and payments industries in India. For instance, through its subsidiary called the National Payments Corporation of India or NPCI, it has uh, developed successful services such as the UPI, Bharat Interface for Money or, or BIM, uh, Rupee and NEFT to name a few. These new payment services have been crucial in increasing financial inclusion as well as in digitalizing the payments industry in India. As I mentioned before, the introduction of new payment services such as UPI by RBI has been so successful that the paper clearing of the retail transactions has dropped from 60% in 2010-11 to a mere 3% in 2019-20 by volume. Wait, is this enough to justify the substantial rise in payments, in digital payments in India over the last decade? Hell no. Do not forget the demonizing demonetization. Yes, you heard me right. The demonetization of the existing notes in 2016 wasn't purely to reduce the black money and corruption in our economy, but to also foster Mr. Modi's vision of creating a cashless India. Due to the cash crunch in our society, the, there was a shift in the mindsets and preferences of people to use digital media of, trans, uh, of payments instead of their all-time favorite cash. So is that all? Wait, not actually. How can we forget our friend Kumpho from Wuhan? the COVID pandemic. The COVID pandemic further accelerated the boost of digital transactions in our country. Well, social distancing to yaar obviously rakhna hai. To payment bhi distance hai kyun na kare? The fear of uh, spreading the COVID virus further reduced the demand for physical cash and uh, that has further boosted uh, online payment services such as UPI, uh, e-wallets, net banking to name a few. This entire shift to the digital platform for payment services sounds quite intriguing and efficient, right? But is Modi's uh, push towards a, a cashless economy actually helping India? Well, to know more about this, let's first find out about the pros and cons of such a system. As I mentioned before, in our country, people love more cash than in our country. And in this chakkar, people go first. What I exactly mean by this is that obviously demonetization affected the entire country. But its effect was most severe on the people who dealt mainly in cash and who were highly dependent on cash. And uh, it is Modi's goal to uh, transform India into a cashless economy. And obviously, if cashless becomes cashless, then we will become less cash economy. And to become a less cash economy and then to transform into a cashless economy, having the right uh, digital payments infrastructure is paramount. Going cashless will not just benefit the consumers but also the government of India by reducing the production costs associated with printing physical money as well as by reducing corruption, tax evasion and the shadow economy that is prevalent in our country. For instance, the RBI spent 3200 crores for printing the currency that is in circulation and uh, it's de definitely going digital will substantially reduce these costs and ha that that'll lead to a lot of cost savings for the government and the central bank which it can use to make long term investments for India's growth. Additionally, going cashless reduces the risk of theft. It also gives more room for analyzing consumers data on their spending behaviors. And lastly, um, with uh, digitalization comes ease of spending and with ease of spending there is a high possibility that consumer spending gets accelerated in India which obviously in turn will help India reach its 5 trillion goal in the near future. However, there are a few major challenges to transforming India into a cashless economy. Com companies like Amazon were compelled to offer cash on delivery option in specifically for their sales in India. So just think about it, how difficult it would be for the Indian government to change the mindset of Indians to move away from cash and into digital modes of payments. This is furthermore compounded by the extremely low digital literacy in terms of online banking and payments. Moreover, with just 2 to 3 lakh ATM machines across all of India, will be mostly in 
the big metropolitan cities, it becomes extremely difficult to activate and use banking cards on the point of sales terminals. Knowing the benefits of going digital as well as the challenges involved, the government of India is actively involved in its transformation of India into a cashless economy. Apart from launching payment services such as Fastag, Bhim UPI and Rupay to name a few, the government of India is also actively involved in increasing awareness and literacy regarding digital payments through its 24-hour TV channel called Digishala. Moreover, it also has a dedicated helpline that is provided by Niti Aayog in collaboration with NASCOM that is mainly used for addressing customer queries as well as grievances regarding digital payments. Extrapolating on the current growth trajectory, it is expected that the digital payments market in India will cross a whopping $1 trillion by 2025. This would be largely driven by the increased use of digital services by merchants, government's policies such as Jandan that is targeting increased financial inclusion as well as the growth of millennials and an increased use of smartphones in India. However, with that said, it is uh, important to note that there is a long way to go to achieve a cashless economy in India and th that would require collaboration between the policymakers and all other relevant stakeholders including the incumbent banks, the fintech startups as well as the customers. Government ka success in terms of increasing financial literacy and awareness and changing the Indian mindset as well as developing the necessary infrastructure and a robust system to deal with cyber crimes and attacks. He will tell us what cashless India is in India.